this is the session number uh, three. We are almost done with this session. Uh, we are going to start with this almost last day because we are going to have one more day uh, tomorrow. And that will be the last day of this course. So uh, it's almost at the end. And we are going to have some, uh, we are going to continue with the topic that we were developing yesterday. In this case, we are going to continue with the topic of the theater because we have two parts more in which we are going to explain uh, the uses of those two parts that we have in the theater because yesterday we were talking about the future, uh, the future simple and the future um, the future continuous and now we are going to see a future perfect and future perfect continuous so um, we are uh, going to start with that part but first I need to tell you something um, recuerden que mañana se termina lo que es el curso así que tienen que haber completado lo que es el trabajo en la plataforma. Recuerden que tienen que haber completado para mañana lo que es la eh, sección número 5 junto con el midterm. So, tienen que haber terminado también el examen para poder completar lo que es su trabajo de la plataforma. Así que solo recordarles a aquellos que no han terminado lo que es el trabajo en la plataforma que tienen hasta el día de mañana. Ya mañana tiene que estar completo todo su trabajo en la plataforma junto con el examen final para que usted lleve, ¿verdad? Lo que es el progreso de todo su trabajo durante este mes. Ya se termina, mañana es el último día, mañana es la última sesión. Así que para los que no han eh, completado lo que es en la plataforma, eh, tienen que trabajar en eso para completarlo para el día de mañana. I know that we are not complete with the, um, the participants of the meeting, but I will, um, I will tell this uh, thing uh, later when there uh, are more uh, participants in the meeting. So I am just telling to you, and then I will remember the others to work on the platform because we know that this is one of the most important things that we need to do in these courses. Because in that case, you are like expressing the things that you are learning during your process. And I'm not talking that uh, you are just learning about the things that I am uh, giving to you, but you need to practice also to complete the exercises and all of that thing. So uh, that is just, um, the things that you need to do. So remember to work on the platform if you are not complete with that information because it's almost um, the end. And also remember that you need to complete all the things that you need to do for the other um, courses that you are going to, to have in the future. Así que ya saben, tiene que uh, tener completo su trabajo en la plataforma para el día de mañana. So, we are going to start and we are going to continue with the topic that we were developing yesterday. That is the topic of the future tenses. So let's, hello. Oh, let me see. On the group or in private? Si gusta, vuélvame a mandar el mensaje de... Vuelvame Perdone. Ajá. Hola, Miss. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Sí, yo le, mand yo le mandé unos, unos, unos mensajes hace, creo que la semana pasada fue a su personal. 
pero eran de la sección 3, creo yo, son, son dos, dos, ahí creo que le han quedado, no sé si los si lo reviso, los reviso, se los voy a volver a enviar, pero son, son de la tercer, creo yo, sección, ya, ya lo terminé, ¿Cómo? pero solo son dos, 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 ¿cómo decirle?, dos partes incompletas que no le encuentro cómo terminarlos. Es lo único que, que, que me hace falta, pero se los mandé, mis, no sé si, si los Vaya, eh, si cayeron. Lo más seguro es que sí. Escríbame ahorita, solo eh, póngame un hola por ahí para que me llegue otra vez lo de su chat hasta el principio y le voy a ayudar en este momento a completarlo. Muchas gracias. Bueno, ahorita, gracias. Ok. Si alguien más tiene problemas con otro ejercicio, eh, tratemos de hacerlos en este momento. Aprovechemos este momento para poder eh, hacerlos, para que podamos completar lo que son las actividades. Así que si tiene alguien más otro problema con la plataforma, puede, eh, por favor, avisarme para que nos pongamos a revisar esos ejercicios. Ok. Uh -huh. Ahí le, le volví a enviar mis, el saludo. Ok. No sé sí. si tiene ahí lo, los, las la capturas de pantalla. Sí, en esos mismos ejercicios sí. que tiene el, el, el problema ahorita. Son, sí, son los únicos dos. Ya todo la, lo que es el, el, toda la plataforma ya la terminé. Todo, todo, todo. Solo esos dos me están haciendo como que el... el el problema ahí, ¿verdad? De no completar el 100%. Vaya, en el caso del número 4, no, es el número 3, creo, ¿verdad? 2 y 3. Sí. Uh -huh. Vaya, ahorita vamos a ver. Vamos a revisar eso. Complete the conversation, use the past tense, and make sure not to use or use capital letters when necessary. En este caso nos dice, ¿verdad?, que no vamos a utilizar las mayúsculas, porque como no está al principio de lo que es la oración, ahí hay que ver lo de las mayúsculas también. Dice, did in high school. En ese caso sería he. Did he, él. Did he... Study French in high school. Did he study French in high school? Porque la respuesta es no. He didn't study French in high school. He studied Spanish. En ese caso sería he study French. Porque ya tiene el, el auxiliar, así que en ese caso solo sería poner el pronombre él. He study normal French. Ok, he study French. Ajá. Solo eso, he study French. Ajá. Trate de ponerlo ahorita para ver si no le da problema. Ok, quiero, quiero, quiero ver. Uh -huh. Quiero ver. <coughs> Todo en minúscula, ¿verdad? Sí, se puede poner todo en minúscula o French lo puede poner en mayúscula, no hay problema. Sí, me lo aceptó. Eh, ya la última eh, de lo que habla la... la... La, la, el punto 3 también no, no lo tengo. Uh -huh. El 3 de la donde dice from college también. Sí, sí, sí. En ese, ahí tiene que agregarle el auxiliar did. 
did they, el pronombre they, graduate. Graduate, no en pasado, sino did they graduate. Gra Graduate, así, así uh -huh. como lo escucha, sí, así sí. lo va a escribir. Did sí. they graduate? They graduate. Uh -huh. Graduate, vamos a ver. No me lo acepta, no sé si quiere. Sin mayúsculas okay. en este caso. Did they graduate? No, no me lo acepta. Espérame. No se ve. No, no me lo acepta. No le está poniendo puntos ni nada, ¿verdad? No. De graduate le pongo, pero no sí. me lo acepta. Primero le voy a poner did, el pasado de do, did, uh -huh. luego el pronombre they y luego el verbo graduate. Ah, ok. Uh -huh. No, no sé por qué no me lo acepta. They, o quizás lo estoy escribiendo mal. Vamos a ver. They graduate. A... Th e i primero. No. Te voy a poner en el chat. Así lo tengo okay. que escribir. Ay, perdone, mis que le estoy no. quitando el tiempo. No, no te preocupes si para eso. <ríe> perdone. Estamos. Gracias. They graduate. Así mismo lo tiene que escribir. Mm, voy a ver. Quiero. Did, ah, el did no lo había puesto. El did, tiene que ponerle el did, el auxiliar. Ok, quiero ver. Did. They graduate. Ah, hoy, hoy, ahora sí. Ahora sí. That's good. Y el otro creo yeah. que era el del use to. Sí, ahorita lo reviso, mis. Um, Quiero ver. Donde dice play soccer when you were a child. Sí, sí, es la uno, sí, la, la, la parte. ¿De la 1 a la 3? Sí, es, es correcto. Ok, en este caso, como está haciendo preguntas con negativo, Aquí, para iniciar, tiene que poner did, el mismo uh -huh. del pasado de do, pero en mayúscula. Did you use to, sin D. Did you use to. You. Use, pero en este caso no es como el use to, sino que en este caso es en presente. No le va a poner la D. Uh -huh. did, did you use. Uh -huh. Did you use to. Veré ahorita. Sí, sí, me lo aceptó. En el segundo es solo used to. Es decir, en pasado. Used to. En minúscula, no le vaya a poner mayúscula. Ok. Used to, vamos a ver. Used. Used to. Use. Used to, used to. Mm. No, quizás no, pero used to. En, en, en pasado, used, con D al final. Used. Ah, ok. Uh -huh. Used Yes. Sí, 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 mis, me lo aceptó. Ok, y en la última es did, otra vez, did you use sin de to collect. 
Did you use to collect? Did you use to collect? Collect. Es el mismo verbo que tiene entre paréntesis, collect. Did you collect or did, did, you, did you use? Did you use, sin de, use to collect? Me dijo, did you use collect? Tiene que ponerle el to también después del use. To, luego collect. Mm, quizás lo estoy escribiendo mal, pero me, did you use, me dijo, teacher. Sí, did you use to collect? Did you use? Did you use to collect. Ahí se lo puse también para que lo revise en el chat. Ay, sí, sí. Ah, ok, hoy sí. Mm -hmm. Así mismo. No me lo, no me lo acepta. Did you use to call it? No. Todo es con minúscula y lo trato de usar con mayúscula al principio también, pero no me lo acepta. No, ahí sí, solo es en, en minúscula. Did you use to call it? Ajá, así como me lo escribí. P-O-L-L-E-C-T. Collect. Vamos a ver, voy a corregir eso. Ahora sí, yo me había comido la C. Ahora sí, Miss. Oh, Estoy okay. completo. Le agradezco mucho, Miss. Gracias, gracias. You're welcome. Para eso estamos. Ahí sí lo tengo al 100%. Muchas okay, gracias. Hey, excelente, muy bien. Gracias. Bueno. Uh, problem with word order. In which exercise? Uh, let's see, Claudia. E. Word order, okay. In all of them, in todos ellos. In the second and third, okay. In the second one. Remember that we are going to use the pronoun first. So in this case, we should have more bicycle lanes. We, con mayúscula, we 
then we need to write should. We should have more bicycle lanes. And we need to put period. Tenemos que ponerle siempre el punto. We should have more bicycle lanes. Okay, with that, with the number two. No, no is that exercise? In which one? In which section? Don't worry, you keep writing on the chat. But in what in which section is the exercise? In qué section está el ejercicio? En el midterm sería en el examen final. Ah, ok. Ok, let me see. En el midterm. En el 2 y 3, ok. So let me take uh, B in the midterm and I will explain the exercise. So let's see. E. I can find my new cell phone in esa. I can find my new cell phone. Es en la parte de I wish. Ah, but in this case, it's the same uh, sentence that I was saying. Sí, es el mismo ejercicio que le estaba diciendo. Es en la parte 3. En ese caso, le estaba diciendo que usted iba a poner primero el, el subject. We, yes, we should have more bicycle lanes. Like this. But you need to write the period. I, I, I forgot to write it. We should have more bicycle lanes. Con el punto al final. And in the number three is, um, there is too much air pollution. There is too much air pollution. Check the answers and tell me if they are correct now.
Solo me avisa si ya están correctas para ver si continuamos. Yes. Ok, good. Very, very good. You're welcome. Someone else, alguien más que tenga algún otro problema con alguno de los ejercicios. If not, we are going to continue with the topic. And the thing um, is that I need to um, tell you that you have to complete uh, the work on the platform for tomorrow. So I'm, I think that um, all of you or almost all of you uh, has finished the work on the platform. So I think it is not necessary to remember that, but uh, the thing that I was saying at the beginning is that you need to have completed the part of, or the section number five, and the meter. Así que tienen que haber terminado el, la sesión 5 y el examen final para mañana, ya que mañana es la última sesión de este curso. Así que para los que no han terminado, vienen hasta mañana para completarlo. So, now, if we don't have any troubles with the platform, we are going to continue because eh, we have just maybe half an hour to complete the last part of this topic. So it's a very good thing that we can uh, work on the exercises right now because you are going to complete your platform and, and that's the point of this course. So we are going to continue because we have uh, two parts that we need to complete. So here we are. So then yesterday we were talking about the future and we were explaining um, in which case we can use the simple, um, the future simple in this case, we have here the future, uh, the future tenses and the words that we can use, the structure that we can use. Because in this case, we are going to use will, going to, also we are going to use present continuous to express things in the future, but in this case, they are uh, something that we are really sure that it's going to happen. Then the simple present, also we can use it for uh, future actions. Then we were talking about the future simple, the form, uh, some examples, we were uh, like seeing the uses that we can uh, have for this structure. Then we were talking about uh, the um, the future continuous, that was the last part that we were learning yesterday. And in this case, we were talking about the, uh, the form of this one. And now we are going to continue with the use that we can give for this structure. And then we are going to see future perfect and future perfect continuous. So let's see the uses for this um, structure. So, and in this case, we are going to have like a short list of uses that we can have or we can give to this structure. The first one said that in this case, we were talking about this situation yesterday that an action in progress at a specific time in the future. For example, at 5 p.m. this time tomorrow, in two weeks, in five years time, etc. And we have the example, this time tomorrow, I will be flying to Barbados. So in this case, we are going to use this structure, the future continuous, for actions that are in, or that are in progress in this moment. So in that case, they are happening, but has like um, influence in the future. Así que son cosas que están pasando en el momento, pero que tienen influencia en el futuro porque se van a acabar en ese momento. Así que vamos a escribir la primera.
The second one is an action we see as new or temporary. For example, uh, we are living in a situation that we see as temporary because we know that it's going to change because we are doing something to um, change that situation. So in this case, it's for things that we are doing in this moment, but they are going to change in the future because we are working for that. And we have an example. I will be working for my dad until I find a new job. So in this case, we are doing this um, action because we are searching for a new job and we are going to work with our dad because we are waiting for that new um, situation. The next one is for predictions or guesses about future events. In this case, we are like guessing what is the action that is going to happen in a specific event. And we have the example. And in this one, it says he will be coming for the uh, he will be coming to the party. I guess. Next one. And in this case, we're talking about predictions about the present. And we have an example. She will be getting married right now, I imagine. So in this case, we are talking about present, but we are not too sure about the situation that are happening because we know um, that in this case, she is going to have um, that activity. And we think that it is like happening right now, but we are not in the, in the same place. And the last one said, polite inquiries. And we have here the example. And this one said, will you be joining us for dinner? Will you be joining us for dinner? So that's a polite question. So in this case, we have the uses for the, um, the future continues, so now we are going to see because we have uh, like, we have time to complete uh, the information. We are going to talk about future perfect. And in this case, we are going to see how to form the future uh, perfect. We are going to see some information about them. And also we are going to see the uses for the future perfect. In this case, this is number three future perfect.
And we are going to have the form or the structure for this one. So let's see. I'm going to do it like this. And we have for a negative form. First is affirmative, I mean. And we need the subject plus will plus have plus the past participle of the main verb. So in this case, this is the last part. Then for the negative, we have the subject plus want, or we can use will not. Let's have plus past participle. And you know that in this uh, sentence, we can add the complement. So in that case, you know that you are going to use the complement at the end of this structure. And in the interrogative, will plus subject, plus have, plus the past participle. And also the question mark. And we have one more, in this case it's negative interrogative form. And we have want. And you know that you are going to use will not if you feel more comfortable with that, um, with that uh, form of the verb, or I mean, with the form of the future. Then the subject plus have plus the past participle. And we have the question mark. So we have four a, a structure or four a, different forms for this a, a tense. That is the future a perfect. In this case, we are going to use will. That is the main thing that we are using in this case with this, this kind of a structure. But in this one, we're going to use have. That is the different from the other structure. In this case, we are going to use have and the past participle of the verb. So we are going to use the past for this structure. And when we are going to use this structure, or we can say uses, and in this one, we are going to mark like this. And we have future perfect is mostly used to talk about action that will be completed before a specific time in the future. Así que en este caso, vamos a hablar de acciones que van a ser completadas antes de que pase eh, un tiempo en específico en el futuro. So we are going to see use number one.
And we have the example. Would you have gone to bed when I get back? Así que como estamos hablando de completar las acciones a un eh, tiempo determinado, en este caso, cuando decimos, would you have gone to bed when I get back? ¿Te habrás ido a la cama cuando yo regrese? Es como decir, justo cuando yo llego, tú ya te has ido a dormir. So, estamos terminando la acción justo antes de que otra cosa pase. So, in that case, would you have gone to bed when I get back? Then we have the use number two. We use this tense when we want to talk about an action that will need a certain duration in the future. In this case, we are talking about uh, how many time. In this case, we are going to uh, perform an action or we are doing something. So we are talking about an action that will need a certain duration in the future. Just in this case, talking about the future. And for this one, we have an example. And it says, he will have worked in China for two years by 2020. Él habrá trabajado en China por dos años en el 2020. So in that case, we are talking about um, the time this person is working in that country. Number three. We can also use the future perfect when we are talking about a certainty about the near past. And we have an example. They will have arrived at the hotel by now. And the last one, we must pay attention to these time frame indicators by tomorrow, by next week, by 2000, and we can add the, the years, when, before, and in two years. So in this case, we need to uh, focus on the indicators of the time in which we are performing the actions or uh, the time in which we are talking about. So we have this example of words in which we need to pay attention when we are like uh, using this structure.
So in this case, we have completed the information that we have about the future perfect. And now uh, for the last minutes that we have in this, um, in this session, we are going to talk about the future perfect continuous. That is the last tense that we are going to use in future. Así que vamos a pasar a lo que es el, el future perfect continuous, que es el último de los tenses o de los tiempos que tenemos del futuro para terminar lo que es el, el tema del futuro y ya dejar eso atrás. Porque ya tuvimos eh, la, sección, la sesión de ayer y la de hoy con los eh, future tenses. And tomorrow we are going to have another topic that we are going to develop in the last day. So we are going to see the future perfect continuous. We are going to see the, um, the structures like we uh, did with this one. And then we are going to uh, see the uses. And this case is kind of short. It's not like very long information that we have about the future continuous. So let's begin. This is number four, future perfect continuous. But in this case, we are going to use the uh, future perfect continuous to show that something will continue up until a particular event in the future. And in this case, we can use it and to emphasize how long something will have been happening for. In este caso, vamos a utilizar lo que es el future perfect continuous um, para explicar eh, o mostrar que algo continúa en el futuro hasta que otra situación llegue a cambiar eso. También lo utilizamos para eh, hacer énfasis de cuánto tiempo algo ha estado pasando. Así que vamos a hablar de situaciones que comenzaron en el pasado y que siguen pasando y que van a seguir pasando en el futuro a menos que llegue otra situación a cambiarlo. And now we are going to see the forms. We have number one, the positive or affirmative. And we are going to use the subject plus will have been plus ing form of the verb. And we have an example. I will have been studying. I will have been studying. Then we have the negative. We have the subject plus will not have been 
will not or won't have been class ing forms and we have the example i won't have been studying i won't have been studying then we have the question or the interrogative one And we have we a plus subject. Plus have a being. Plus ing form of the verb. And we have the example. Will I be a studying? Will I be a studying? In this case, we have the last one. Negative, interrogative form. We have will not or one plus subject. Plus have been plus ing in this case we are going to use more b than the other one one i b is again And for the uses, in this case, we have just two uses for this one. And we have that in the future perfect, a continuous that is a progressive tense. We use it to describe progressive action that continue over time until a specific point. So the most possible context in which we need is in a situation in which we are um, projecting ourselves forward in time and looking back at the duration of that activity that is expected to continue in the future for example in november i will have been working at my company for three years como les decía en este caso vamos a estar utilizando esta esta estructura para explicar que nosotros estamos haciendo algo que viene desde el pasado pero que nosotros nos estamos proyectando a que continúe Así como en el ejemplo, en noviembre eh, habré estado trabajando en mi compañía por tres años. So that is something that we are thinking that is going to happen in the future. And remember to be careful with non-actions non verb to be, to see, because they are not suited to the future perfect continuous tense. They just take the future perfect tense on Thursday. I will known for you you for a week so we have like some verbs that we're not going to use for this uh, kind of uh, structure because it's not like going to work but we are going to end the topic of the future here and also we are going to end the session here remember we are going to have the last session tomorrow so we are going to see each other tomorrow have a really good night and we are going to have one more day. So bye bye. Okay. Thank bye you. bye. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome.